Hey everyone, welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay, so grab a brush, grab some paints, grab some models, let's rid our world of unpainted models. As always, shout out to Cody Rue, congratulations to Stu, and Adam, you missed a spot. So let's get started. And this week's Painting with Jay, I'm going to continue finishing up, I'm just basically going to finish up my Elysian Star Striders. Other than the dog, who I will do a miniature painting 101 in the near future for. He's going to be my next little mini painting model, because I want to paint Doberman for Miniature Painting 101, it'd be cool. So today I'm just going to put the final touches on the HQ character, and then base, and then we'll go from there. So, let's get started, yes. Hey everyone, so I'm finishing up my cap, my leader of my Illusidian Star Striders. Today I just have a couple more colors to paint her. She's coming quite along, as you can see. Um, I'm just going to do a little dot of blue, finish it with the gold, and then that'll be it. And then she's basically done, and then I'm going to base her as well as all my other little characters here you know they're all cool and we'll get that done and then I'll probably return back to my Admech uh, slash Imperial Knights um, yeah it's been a fun month October has begun Orktober as I call it I, I think I coined the phrase maybe not maybe other people came up with it too at the same time but it's Orktober people and so there's no better way to celebrate Orktober by painting Illucidian Star Striders. Not orcs, apparently. That's okay. I'm not going to be painting much this, this month. Um, I'm sorry if you can hear my laundry going in the deep background here. But um, I'm not going to paint much this month. I'm going to be taking a little break from videos for a couple weeks. I'm going on a little vacation. Um, I've been working really hard for a while. And uh, I need a vacation. So my, my girlfriend and I are going on a trip soon. We are heading, as I mentioned in my previous videos, we are heading to, uh, to Europe. Well, of course, we'll have a house sitter taking care of Spock and Jimmy or Kat. But um, I'm really excited. We're heading to Germany uh, at the end of the week. And we'll be back in a couple weeks. Uh, right now, I'm just taking some Gehenna's Gold. Gehenna's Gold, I believe? Yes. And I'm just going to highlight up the raised areas of, or whatever, you know, is facing upwards on the gold areas. Um, so, yeah, we're heading to Germany in a few days. It'll be the end of the week. And it'll be a lot of fun. We're doing a tour, which is not usually my cup of tea, but that's okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really enjoy it. We're doing a lot of cool scenery and stuff. And my girlfriend really, really wants to do this, and I am happy to go with her on this, this fun trip. You know, uh, I am excited. It's gonna be cool to see some really cool architecture, some castles and museums. Um, it's gonna be a little, uh, like, again, we're going to some places like on Thanksgiving. This is actually gonna be the first Thanksgiving in Canada that I'm not celebrating Thanksgiving. Um, and on Monday, we're going to a, I think it's Monday, we're going to be going to a Nazi concentration camp for, and that's, it's just one of those things you should always see if you have the chance, because it's history, and you can learn a lot from just, ex you know, seeing it, and witnessing it, it's really powerful stuff, it's not usually the fun times that you really want to do, but, um, It's a great thing to witness, you know, the power of, of the history and, and the, what happened there and to just give your respects to all the people who lost their lives, you know. Um, yeah, my, my grandfathers both enlisted in the, well, my, grand, my grandfather who is still alive on my mother's side, he tried to enlist in the military but was too young to be sent overseas. My grandfather on my father's side, however, who was significantly older, he'd be like 115 if he was still alive today. Um, he fought, he was an instructor in the, I believe, the Air Force during World War II. And, uh, yeah. So they, he fought in World War II. And, uh, So, you know what? It's it's a place to go. However, we're also going to. Uh, I realized this the other day. Uh, I was just going over and, and just doing a little more research on Munich, 
And my girlfriend looked it up in the past, and she thought we were landing too late for Oktoberfest. And she was wrong. We're landing the last weekend of Oktoberfest in Munich. So, Jay is going to Oktoberfest! The only thing is I don't drink, so... But it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna have a beer. Uh, probably I'll split a beer. Um, because it is tradition. You must have a beer at Oktoberfest if you go to Oktoberfest. I'm really more looking to look forward to the food. That's what I'm looking forward to, is the food. Um, so she's coming along well. Look at her. Look at this. There we go. Yeah, um, just the food is going to be awesome. So we're going to go to Oktoberfest probably on, let's see, either Friday or Saturday. Um, probably not Sunday. Looks like probably Friday or Saturday. So, that'll be cool. A lot of fun. Jay going to Oktoberfest. It's pretty wacky. Alright, so now I'm going to take, um, for some of the golds, I'm going to take a Orc Armor Gold and make it really yellow at the bottom to go with all my other guys. Um, just put some in my palette. I'm going to miss my, my cat, my dog. It's, it's going to be the longest time I've ever been away from my dog. And I know it sounds a little cheesy and sappy, but I really do. It's going to be, I'm going to miss him. I, I haven't been away from him for more than five days since I got him years ago. And especially since the divorce, I haven't. But uh, he'll be in good hands. I have some, some house sitters coming, and they're going to take care of him. And uh, he'll be good. He'll be good. And I, I have faith in them that they'll, they'll be in good hands. Um... He's a good little guy. So, he'll be good. Uh, what else? It's been a busy September, and now it's over. Right? We're, not, we're in October. Or October. As I said, nothing like painting some Illusidian Star Striders. I went to a tournament. Um, I went to a tournament two weekend, last weekend. Last weekend? No. Two weekends ago? No, last weekend. I don't even know what time, what day, what time it is anymore. Days. All right. So, uh, week two weekends ago, I went to a tournament in Kingston, and it was a team tournament. Uh, and I brought orcs. It was fun. Good time. My, I had fun time with my team. We came in fourth overall. There was, um, my team was a little controversial, but I'm not going to go too deep into it. But essentially, one of the things that I, w I really want to make a video of discussing this is when do you stop playing a tournament game, right? The problem is with tournament games is that, like, when I film battle reports, I live in a little bubble. I film, and we film until the game's over. It's pretty much that. We can call the game at any point, but we film until the game ends. There's no time limit. But in a time limit environment, thus creates the situation of... You're playing to the game, you're playing to the end of the game, or you are playing to the end of time. And time, usually, as many of you know who play in tournaments, runs up quickly. And that's what happened in many of our games. Was that we would be playing, and it'd be like, bottom of two, and then they'd be like, time's up soon, quit playing. And when we go, uh, oh, crap. Do we, do we, should we keep playing? And it happened in one of our games, that there was a bit of a dispute between um, really my teammate and the other team. Actually, in two of our games there were, but one of them it was pretty quick. But um, and then we there was a discussion, right? Should we continue or should we not? Now, my partner and I were being relatively conservative with our movements and our um, we were I, I was keep like I was always trying to keep an eye on the objectives because. Even if it meant being less aggressive, because I didn't know how much time was left. I, had, I the problem was I was at a table where I had no. Uh, right now I'm just taking some some uh, ghost tint and putting it directly in the little glass thing, and that's basically it. She'll be done. I think she's pretty much done. She's tabletop. So um, in one of our games, it took you know two hours and eighteen minutes to finish the first two turns. Now the next turn could have been done quickly. But it would have been just literally movements and stuff, and it wouldn't have been a full turn. So two hours and 18 minutes into a two and a half hour game, 
We're just finishing turn two. And at the end of this turn, my partner and I are in the lead. Now, by no means did I ever, what's called, you know, slow play or anything. I even brought a, uh, a template, not a template, a tablet with dice rolling on it so that my movements were quick and clean. My dice rolling was quick and clean. So now I'm just going to take some more Fang Brown and I'm going to do some dry brushing on uh, the bases. And I'm going to get all these bases done because it's time to start basing the, um, the guys. And probably the rest of this video is just going to be basing. So I'll start with him, or her, technically. Um, but um, I was never slow playing. I, d I would never do that. You know, I w did my turns. In fact, the majority of each turn was simply me moving, removing models, right? Because being a York player, if someone shot at my guys, they were frequently dead. Um, and it was mostly my partner moving and shooting, too. He played, uh, at that point, it was Dark Elder. My partner was Dark Elder. It was one of those team tournaments where you play with each partner a few times. And we're up against um, Astra Militarum and what was the other one? It wasn't Tau. Maybe it was, no, it wasn't Astra Militarum. It was Astra Militarum and Dark Eldar. Yeah, Dark Eldar and Astra Militarum. And so, uh, there was a discussion just between us, and it got a little little heated, um, because not I really wasn't a part of it. I just figured the easiest way is I brought the judge over, right? You bring the judge over, if the judge says keep playing, we keep playing. If the judge says stop playing, you stop playing. Simple, right? Because at, that, at the end of that turn, we were winning. In fact, we had all the objectives because our opponents didn't, uh, other than maybe the opponents had one objective, I don't remember if they did, because they were really playing for the the, um, the mission, right? They were they were wanting to table us. They were wanting to um, well, they weren't playing for the mission. I guess. They were playing for the long term. Yeah, it was better saying, right? They were playing for the long term. They didn't realize that we any after turn two, and so this hap this has happened to me on multiple tournaments. It really does happen, and then it brings up the debate of how much time do you stop playing? And, the, and as and as I'm fully aware. There are some people who try to abuse this at tournaments and do what's called slow playing so that they can intentionally, like, especially if you're in the bottom, if you're the last per person to go, you can, um, you can slow play, play slower than you would, and then all of a sudden you, um, the game's over and your opponent goes, oh, the game's over, and, and then you win. Um, and obviously, the good the guys that we were playing against were good guys. I would play against them any day of the week. In fact, I think they ended up winning the tournament. I think, I'm pretty sure it was them who won the tournament overall. We came in fourth. Um, they were good guys. I'd play against them in a heartbeat. You know, not, by no means that. It was just the discussion. Should we end the game or should we not end the game? And we ended the game because um, we brought in the judge. The judge looked at the table and said, yeah, the game's over. Like, you guys, it took you yeah, two hours and 20 minutes to to play the first, or 18 minutes to play the first, you know, two rounds, we're not going to give you another round time, it'll just waste time, right? So, yeah, so he, uh, he called it and we, we won as a result, but it was, it's not the best way to win, and it's not the way you really want to win, as a, and it was, it was for fun anyway, but uh, it's not the nicest way to win or lose, is based on time running out, right? Because the game is still plenty of game. But that's what happens, though, when you bring... A lot of these lists were 2,000 points of, of small units or cheap units. So it was very hard for a lot of our opponents to get past, or our games to get past turn two, maybe at most turn three, because of the turns of just constant shooting. It was mostly shooting, like a lot of, a lot of units just shooting. And it would take up a lot of time. A lot of time. So, and uh, yeah. So that was basically it. Like, it was a fun game tournament. I'd do it again, probably. Maybe I'd have to think about it, but I, I had a good time, I think. Um, I was just kind of a last minute call in. Uh, my team needed a, a fourth member, and so I joined. Their previous one had left. Um, orcs were fun to play. I was the only, I was one of the two players who brought orcs. And it was a very interesting, um, it was an interesting event. Because I don't play in a lot of... Comp it was supposed to be for fun. Right? I was told ahead of time it was a fun event. 
But by no means were the lists for fun. The majority of them were quite competitive, and even some, I would say, were win-at-all-cost lists. Um, yeah, there were some really brutal, brutal, brutal lists out there. And, um, oh yeah. And there were, like, you, you could choose five armies, and they would represent, like, 95% of the meta there. Um, the five armies would have been Astra Militarum. There were a lot of Astra Militarum, specifically with mortar spam, so that they could just fire large amounts of shots and ignoring line of sight. Um, that's Jimmy. You can't come in here, Jimmy. Um, so, that was one of them. Uh, demons. Oh my goodness, so many demon armies. Zinch demons, especially. Uh, there were five or six, so there were uh, 54 players there. And uh, we counted six or seven. Magnus the Reds. Six or seven. My team faced three of them, and my teammate Will, unfortunately, faced all three of them. Because every time that, I'll tell you, talk about the format, basically Will was forced to play against Magnus the Red repeatedly. There were several Mortys, Mortarian lists. Um, Dark Eldar were, were popular as well. Eldar. And uh, Tau. But Tau had, it was mostly like Tau Forge World lists. Where, like, I faced two different lists where you'd say 80, per, uh, ni almost 90% of the opponent's list of 1,000 points was two Forge World models. I believe one of them was the Tiger Shark. So one list I faced had two tiger sharks. Um, and then one list that we faced had two of those. That's Jimmy. He wants to come in, but I'm not letting him. No, you're not coming in. Um, <laughs> he's funny. Um, and uh, two of them had those Tau suits with the, what, 14-inch jump packs. Or 18 inch jump pack, 14 inch flamer with you could supercharge to 3d6 uh, shots, strength, I think that was six, AP minus three, three damage each. They were silly. Like, it was silly. Especially being an orc player, where literally you go, okay, I'm in trouble. Uh, you can't kill them. Because they have an invul in close combat, you can't get into close combat because you have to you have to overwatch. Like Overwatch alone kills everything, and so they kind of just jumped around the field. And my my teammate tried to kill my teammate was Dave in that match. It was Astromel Terum and Orcs versus um, this list, and uh, I don't remember what the other one list was. So we eventually we played for a draw essentially because we kept our objectives surrounded by guys and orc boys who wouldn't get off the objective and he couldn't blow us off the objective without being pretty much you know he would have been assaulted by a lot of stuff. So we ended up drawing that match, but it was a very tough match because again ninety percent of the guys' list was two models, two of the forge world models, and we know that forge world you know they're pretty strong. Uh, Imperial Knights, there were a good amount of Imperial Knights there too. Actually, I'd say that was a pretty strong component of the meta as well. Specifically, the new Knights, um, they were very there. So it was cool, just to seeing, you know, the competitive meta, of course. And you can always assume you know the competitive meta, and then you jump in and into a tournament like this, and you see the competitive meta, and you go, oh, wow, that is competitive, and you see why, you know. Again, most of those armies... I do have an Imperial Knights army, but I play mostly the, the overpriced Forge World guys. Um, I don't play Dark Eldar, Astra Militarum, uh, Demons, right? They're not armies that I, I have. Uh, there were there was one Space Marine army, two Orc armies. The one Space Marine army was uh, was Space Wolves. I'm pretty sure. Um, there was two Tyranid armies, two no sorry three Tyranid armies. We faced all three. Um, my 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 team uh, and there were uh, three. This is a two orc armies. So the demons alone add up to more than space marines, orcs, and tyranids combined. You know, and it's just interesting. So you know, obviously, by seeing it repeatedly, and you saw that very similar lists, very similar. I felt like I faced the same list two or three times, or we saw the same list three two or three times. And so I, 
as again, I was told ahead of time that it was supposed to be for fun, but just notice there's going to be some competitive lists and there's going to be some win at all cost lists. And the thing is, there were really no prizes other than your name on a trophy for first place. It was all based on, on door prizes. It was all door prizes. So it was, um, I'm going to take some more pink brown now and just to break up the browns, dry brush a little bit lighter and bring up uh, some tones, you know, as you can see. Um, so it was, it was fun, but it was a lot of really competitive lists. And our team held our own. Like, again, my, I ran orcs, but I ran a list intentionally to complement, to be a good complement to the other people on my team. So it worked well. I just ran a bunch of boys, and, you know, that's why, of course, that my... And the thing is, with this tournament, there was a roll-off at the beginning between the captains. Whoever won was put in a great advantage at the point where that I didn't like that format. I know I'm not a big fan of the format because in this team tournament, um, so what, what essentially happened is the captain who lost, which unfortunately for us was five of the six times was our captain. Dave, you tried to roll well. Um, and uh, he had to put up a pairing who then got perfectly countermatched by the opponent, right? So. And Dave would frequently put up either the Orc player or the Tyranid player to bait some of the heavy, like, a lot of mass shooting lists to go for us. And, um, as you can hear, Jimmy in the background. So, frequently I was the bait team. And so, you know, we fa I faced Magnus the Red a lot because Magnus the Red against Orcs is very tough. Since, you know, he can go in, do, you know, he's very survivable. All the psychic power shenanigans, which orcs don't really have an answer to. And then, he, if you get close, in every game that I faced Magnus the Red, I got him down to one wound, and then he would just fly away. Which, of course, now, of course, the, the big FAQ has come out since. And uh, that, would have, that would have had a few impacts on our games. Um, several of them. Obviously, and also the, the li all the lists were filled with the um, the stratagems and the, the warlord traits to to farm command points, which once again has been addressed apparently in the big FAQ that you can only get one per turn, which would have been huge because our opponents were like double running them, so they were gaining points like no one's business. Um, yeah, that was also the frequent thing. So, yeah. Like, it was fun overall. I had a good time. It was just a lot of... it For a fun tournament, it was a lot of win-at-all-cost lists. And a lot of competitive lists. And again, like, to each his own. And I'm not being whining or anything, because, you know, you can bring a competitive list. But if you bring it to a fun tournament, I kind of question your motives. And then, of course, becomes the time, like, well, if I don't, you know, if I don't bring a competitive list, this person will bring a competitive list. Like, Adam, who missed a spot. And um, he'll beat me up and it won't be fun. So I'll bring a competitive list too. And then again, the next person says, well, if those two are bringing competitive lists, I better bring a competitive list too. And it's like, okay. And I think that, that tournament organizers have a lot of uh, problems with that because we live in a game and more than ever, other than last edition, which was just hilarious. But, um, you know, this game, there are people who are, they're constantly, their goal is to solely break their lists and break the game. Right, the cheese that people can bring in competitive play really um, off turns me from competitive play. You know, again, bring Tyranids into the example. Um, until the rule of three in the last FAQ, big FAQ, um, people used to bring nine flying hive tyrants. So really, come on, like that's not how Tyranids were designed to play. That's not how the game was designed to play. You're going to a tournament for 2,000 points, bringing nine Hive Tyrants. That's not how the army was designed to play. You are simply picking out the greatest unit in the Codex, and you're spamming it. And have fun. You know, great game. Like, with those kind of lists, you're... It's, yeah, the game's not fun. I don't know, in my opinion. I don't know. And, and I just don't find that fun. And... Uh, and then the rule three came out. So then there were only, you know, three flying hive tyrants per list. And then people would put the rest in Carnifexes. Because Carnifexes are very good for their points levels. And then you would just spam nine Carnifexes. You can get three per squad. And you can bring three of them. 
three squats of three. Boom. Rule of three. And um, for this tournament, though, there was a rule of two. So several of our of the other people in the tournament, we realized, had to um, drop their list down in cheesiness because they brought three of everything, thinking it was a 2,000-point tournament. So rule of three, but it was actually a 1,000-point per, per team, so it was rule of two. And thus, they had to even tone down their lists and, and figure it out, you know. And that's the thing. And I was like, wow, this is the toned down list. That's pretty hilarious. Uh, so I'm just going to take some grass flock now and base these guys for the next, I don't know, five, ten minutes. And then we're going to, I'm either going to call it or we'll go back to some Admet. Because I saw my Admet guys who are still not painted yet. The same guys from my previous painting with Jay. As you can see, though, these guys have been painted. They look pretty good, I'd say. Tabletop level for sure. Um, and that's it. It's just like, oh my goodness, I, I get it. You really, 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 really want to win, right? But I do feel that a lot of these lists are just kind of removing the, the strategy and the good, like, back in 5th edition, I remember the people who won the tournament were usually very, very good generals. On top of bringing a good list, they brought really good, they were really good generals. Yes, Jimmy, very good generals. And so I had a lot of respect for them winning. And I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm judging. I kind of am, but I'm not saying I'm judging those who win now. But a lot of the time, you look at their list and you go, well, that's, yeah, of course, you know. You brought the most undercosted units that you can and you spammed it and great job. You won. And yeah, I don't know. Again, it's not my cup of tea. Um, so, yeah. But, uh, again, I play orcs for fun. There we go. He's done. Based. Next one. Um, I, I don't know. Again, I don't, I think there's a lot of, cre there's not as much creativity in list building for some people. I'm not saying it applies to everyone. By no means is it applying to everyone. Like, um, again, my, my comrade Skari, he does seem to run a variety of lists and win in tournaments. He's a very good general. And uh, cool, I respect that. But um, when you bring nine Hive Tyrants, you win a tournament. And I'm like, okay, great, you bought a, a tournament. Why would you buy nine Hive Tyrants if it wasn't just to win at a tournament? And then a bunch of people got burned when they had nine Hive Tyrants and they could only run three from now on, and they're like, oh crap. And there's a huge change to flying in the most recent FAQ that it only works in the movement phase. So now you can kind of bubble wrap your precious things, and a flying Hive Tyrant cannot assault if there's another model in the way, which is kind of cool. It's a good way to keep your guys alive from those Demon Princes. And such. Adding a little bit of grass flock to each one. And uh, yeah, so as I said, I just, it's the competitive play. I don't, it's not my cup of tea. I, I prefer to have more fun. And I think I play the game more as how it was designed, seeing as, you know, there's multiple slots in an army filled with tons of choices. I don't think, honestly, the Games Workshop people designed the game to have nine high tracks. And then when they did, they quickly created a rule to prevent it. Which shows that it wasn't really what they wanted to do. I don't know. But of course, us being gamers, we're very good at figuring out how to take something and break it. You know? Yeah. So, that was good. This, wedding, this weekend I went to a wedding. My friend Stu got married. Congratulations once again, Stu. Stu got married. And it was a good wedding. I had a good time. A lot of nice people there. Interacted with them. Fun times. Yeah. I've actually never gone to a wedding with my girlfriend. We've been dating for just over a couple years. But we never had, went to a single wedding until two, three weeks ago. And then all of a sudden we've been to two. That's kind of cool. Um, next one. Yeah, 
So as I said, I'm really looking forward to my trip. I'm I'm just taking a break from packing and doing some laundry. My dog is randomly barking at people across the street, and uh, I'm uh, packing right now. So I'm packing all my stuff. Um, we're going for a couple weeks, so I'm bringing a lot of t-shirts. And the Canadian dollar, of course, I bought all my, my Euro money last week, and the Canadian dollar surged today because NAFTA talks finally went through. NAFTA apparently is, is uh, Canada and the US and Mexico reached an agreement for NAFTA. So that's cool. Um, yeah, as I said, I'm really looking forward to my trip. I'm, 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 I'm excited to take a break from life for a couple weeks. I don't do a lot of vacations. Usually it's the, the one or two conventions I go to each year are my vacations. And um, this year I actually get to take a really long vacation. It's going to be a lot of fun. The last time I was off work for this long was Las Vegas um, a few years ago. Yeah, the year before I got divorced. Um, I went to Las Vegas for 10 days. A long time to be in Las Vegas because my ex-wife had a conference and I had the LBO and we just stayed and we had a good time. It was my birthday and I had a really good time but it was the last time I've been like off work for more than five days. I only took I only took two business days off for um, Adepticon this year. So I actually had an email from the HR department at my work saying by the way please take your vacation days. You have a lot. And I was like yeah no problem going away soon. Life's good, you know. Cool. These guys are done. I'm excited. I might call it after this. It's been a half an hour. It's not too bad. But yeah, I had a great time at Stu's wedding. I'm glad he enjoyed it. And probably Stu's going to be watching this video later. Jay's talking about my wedding. Uh, a couple more guys. And I've had fun. Oh, also, I played against Stu using this army. Uh, I know the bases weren't based and one guy was the, the dog isn't painted yet. But um, I had a really good time. I played a, we played two of the narrative campaign missions. We didn't play them in a narrative campaign format. Um, we just played them as separate, you know, one-offs. Uh, because we didn't have time to do a whole campaign and stuff. But it was good. A really fun time. I like the, uh, the Rogue Trader starter set. I'll be painting up the terrain in the near future as well. So that way I can just start using it on the table as well. I think I can actually incorporate into some battle reports. Just some extra stuff. Um... I like the models. I don't think the Illusidian Star Striders are going to be used as much as the uh, Infected. And the Infected actually have a chance to go into some armies or to mix with some Nurgle armies and it'll be really good. There we go. Another one. Look at that. Another one based. And I'll let these guys dry. And then they're done. I'm really excited to have them all done. Then I'm going to go back to uh, probably when I get back from Europe, either paint some orcs, if especially if Speed Freaks comes out before that. Um, and I am going to go back to paint some Admech. You know, get the Admech done over the next you know three or four months. Get all my Admech guys done. Um, paint some Imperial Knights probably as well. I really want to get Canis Rex. Now that he came out, he's a cool model. I like him. There we go. All done. So we've been painting for what? Let's see. It's over half an hour, 35 minutes now. The video's at 35 minutes. Um, yeah, I'm probably going to call it. I should keep. I should go back to doing some laundry. And uh, I'm done those guys. So it's a, nice, it's a nice way to finish up a video is to simply just finish at, you know, the, the finishing up of a squad. And then I'm all done. And I can start working on my ad mech back on the same squad of Admech that I was working on before, these guys, uh, a little bit later, I have a few colors left. Yeah, definitely a few colors left on them, but uh, they're turning out really well. Look at them, they're coming along quite nicely. I'll have them done and I'll start painting the next guy, which is gonna be him, uh, one of the Tech Priest Dominuses, and uh, he'll be a lot of fun to paint up. I'll paint him up over the next, you know, couple, you know, week or two after I get back, and uh, we'll go from there. 
we're gonna go from there. Yes, so let's end now. So that concludes another painting with Jay. I really hope you enjoyed this week's episode and painted along. I know it's a little shorter and I do apologize for that. It's just I'm all done. Done the squad. Might as well uh, call it there. And uh, maybe I'll be able to film one more painting with Jay that will release next week while I'm away. I'll try it in the next couple days. And uh, yeah, so life is good. And I, as, as always, this video is brought to you by all my Patreon subscribers. As you can see, their names go by my head. It's because of them that I can keep making my videos. So if you really want to help support my videos and all my channels, uh, sorry, all my channels, all my videos and my channel, please help and support my Patreon campaign. Link in the description below. Uh, stay tuned for more videos. Until next time, this is Jay saying happy painting with me.